Hey, welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Nelson Lim. I teach other CG practitioners how to create more, earn more, and live more. Welcome to lesson six of our Python for Anxious Artists series. And in today's lesson, we will be showing you how to teach the computer to make some smart decisions and choices. So it's all about making choices in this lesson. And it's a bit of a longer lesson today, but we have so much material to go through and it's going to be so important to bring your coding to the next level. So let's jump right in. I can't wait to show you all of it. Welcome to this lesson on making choices where we learn how to tell the computer to make decisions. Let's first introduce the building blocks of making choices. And the first building block is the data type called Boolean. And the Boolean data type allows us to have variables that can contain true or false data. So let's go ahead and define is found equals to false. So keep note of the capital F here. This is a special notation for Boolean characters. So now let's check out what type of data is this variable is found. And we're told that it is of type bool or Boolean for short. When we print is found, we will see that it's false. In, in the same way, we have the reverse, which is true in capital T. And we can do type is found, still the same type of Boolean. And now let's print it and it's true. Now keep in mind that it is very important not to do a lowercase because this actually will return. It's not defined. Python does not understand it. In the same way, just to kind of review a concept that the, if you have false in quotes, it's not actually equals to the Boolean data type of false because that's a string and the other is a Boolean data type. So if you do this, the string false is not equals to the Boolean type false. So why is this all important? This is important because as human beings, we often make decisions based on analyzing whether information we have at hand is true or false. An example would be, are the bananas at Kroger's better than Costco? True or false? And the answer to that question is going to determine whether you're going to go to Kroger's or go to Costco uh, to shop for bananas. And for those of you who don't know Kroger and Costco, they are grocery chains here in the US. The next building blocks to allow computers to make choices is something known as comparison operators. And we've actually already seen them earlier on. So if I were to say this string, the string Maya, and I want to compare it with another string Maya and say if this is the same as the other, I'd use a comparison operator called the equals. But keep in mind that we use a double equal sign instead of the single equal sign because a single equal sign actually assigns a value to a variable or a data to a variable, whereas the double equal sign compares two values. So I would expect this to return true because the statement is exactly true. So the inverse is the inverse is to actually type Maya, the string Maya is not equals to Maya. And because we know they're essentially the same string, this should return false. And we can do that even with true false statements itself, the value. So it's true, the Boolean value of true is not equals to false. Well, that's definitely true. So you get true. And we can also do that with little things like greater than, is one greater than two? No, so it's false. Is three smaller than five? Yes, so that's true. Is three smaller than or equals to three? Well, it certainly is equals to three, so yes, it should be true. This is a critical block to understanding our next concept. So now I'm going to show you the if statement, and that will tie together the building blocks of helping computers make decisions. We begin off with declaring a variable called who version, uh, in this case, Houdini version, that's for what it is in short. And I'm gonna say Houdini version, who version is uh, 17.5, hit enter. And now I'm gonna introduce the if statement, and I'm going to do open bracket, who underscore version, less than 18.0, close bracket, colon, enter. And you will see the triple dots. The triple dots is the Python interpreter saying that it knows that this if statement has not ended. It's expecting more out of it. So I'm going to hit four spaces, one, two, three, four. Now it's very important that you do four spaces. Don't hit a tab, just do four spaces. 
and open brackets and now I'm gonna print you are missing out on the new sparse volume solvers right hit enter and again it's expecting another line and that's because it can have as many lines as you want to have on it so I'm gonna do another print statement here I'm gonna print not to mention Solaris all right now when I'm done I'm gonna hit enter again it expects one more line but I am done I don't want any more lines so I'm gonna hit enter one more time and it actually prints out you are missing out on the new sparse solvers and not to mention Solaris so let's kind of go through step by step what this simple if statement is doing first of all if is a special keyword so because if is a special keyword please do not use it as the name of a variable or anything else the next is these brackets so whatever we put in the brackets has to return either a true or false so it has to return a boolean data so the computer knows what to do with that information now the reality is the brackets here are optional but i like to put them in for readability and finally we end this if statement here with a colon and all that means is whatever comes next is sort of a block of logical lines on its own so the next thing we did is followed by this sort of four space indent that we have here and we mentioned that that is important indents are really important it's an unusual feature of python white space indents have an effect on the code's meaning logical groups of statements such as those under the if statement are grouped by using the four space indentation and you'll get used to it pretty soon you may see some code um, that is indented by a tab or even two spaces that's perfectly fine too but don't do it it isn't really normal and it's generally discouraged so this tells us whatever is under the if indent is going to run if the statement is true let's look at the flowchart where the program starts off and first it's going to assign the houdini version to the value of 17.5 um, so this is actually kind of incorrect we change it to 17.5 and so it flows down to this if logical statement here where it says if the Houdini version or who version is smaller than 18.0 which it is because it's 17.5 again there's a bit of a typo here then yes it will flow this way and print out these statements all right and these are the logical statements that are grouped together with the four space indentation however if it is not true then it will flow down here and skip up skip down to the next step which happens to be the end of the program as well and so it would end the execution go ahead and try it try creating a houdini version that is equals to 18.0 or greater than 18.0 and see what comes out of this execution now i'm going to introduce you to the else and the else if statements that kind of combine and combo up with the if in the interest of time I've already gotten some code, so I'm going to paste it out here. And you can see I'm executing this line of code where now Houdini version is 10.0. And if the Houdini version is equals to 18.0, print sparse volume pyro solver and flip were introduced, else print Houdini is a great software. If I were to bring out the flowchart here, if who version were to be equals to 18.0, then yes, it would print sparse pyro and flip was introduced. But because it's 10.0, it's going to evaluate as no. So we expect it to actually print Houdini as a great software. Go down the flow and actually end. So let's see if this is what it does. Hit enter. And yes, Houdini is a great software. The else allows you to basically catch the flow if this comparison is not true. So if it's not true and you really want to do something, if it's not true, then you can go ahead and use the else and catch that. A more complex example would include using the else if syntax. So here is an example of an else if syntax where I've set Houdini version, same 10.0. And if the who version is 18.0, it would print this statement. Else if it were equals to 10.0, it would print this statement. And else if Houdini version is smaller than or equals to 9.5, it would print, wow, that's pretty old school. Else it would print Houdini is a great piece of software. So if you have a variety of possible options, you can use the else if syntax. And some of you who may be familiar with other programming languages, it's sort of a replacement of the select syntax that some other programming languages have. I rarely use it in practice um, because an else if statement does tend to make code difficult to maintain in the long run. 
So let's try to run this, see if you guess what would be the right answer. Well, if you guess that it would print pyro effects was added, then you got it right. Let's take a real quick look at the flowchart. As we look at the flowchart, we'll be able to see that we start off over here and we assigned who version uh, with 10.0 and it flows straight down. And because who version is not equals to 18.0, it evaluates as no. So it jumps to the next statement. And now we know, oh, this is going to evaluate as yes, true, because who version is 10.0. So it's going to print pyro effects was edit and it's going to flow down this way, skip everything else and end. Along this if statement, it's going to evaluate it from top to bottom, the first else if statement to the next else if statement, and so on and so forth. And at any point in time, if it evaluates true, it's going to follow that flow and exit out of the overall if. Next, I like to introduce the in and not in operators, They're sometimes known as membership operators and how they work. In this example, I've got another movie quote. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Well, if there's any of you who can tell, it's The Wizard of Oz, 1939. So if Toto in quote print The Wizard of Oz, 1939, else print, I'm not sure. So this is really, really useful. If you want to find a phrase um, within a string, you could easily use the in operator to do that. And that will evaluate as true if this string of characters is found within the string or it will evaluate as false if it is not found in that string. So let's hit enter. Enter. And yes, it prints the Wizard of Oz because Toto was found in the quote. In the same way, you could use not in as an illustration of that. So you can say Kansas not in quote. And it actually evaluates to false because Kansas is found in quote. So that's another example of using not in, but at the same time, it also evaluates that whatever is within this brackets or within here, which I didn't put brackets, has to evaluate to true or false in order for the if statement to know whether to run this line or to run this line. To round off our learning of teaching the computer to make choices, I'm going to introduce to you the and and or operators. In this example, we have our quote. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Texas anymore. Well, I've modified the quote a little bit, so it's definitely no longer from the Wizard of Oz. And so I'm going to take a look at this statement here where it says, if Toto in quote, all right? So this will likely evaluate as true. And now this is our special operator that we're introducing, Kansas in quote. So we're not going to find Kansas in quote because I've modified it. So if this is true and this is also true, then print The Wizard of Oz 1939. So if you got it right already, we're not going to see anything printed out. Now, how about if I essentially have the same line, except that I modified the end with an or. So if Toto in quote, yes, it's in quote, so it's going to evaluate as true or Kansas in quote, so it's not going to evaluate as true, then print the Wizard of Oz. But so long as any one of these statements evaluate as true, it's going to print the Wizard of Oz 1939. So that is the power of using the or. And we can hit enter, enter again, and we get the Wizard of Oz 1939. So we know that that works because it takes whichever statement is tr true, it's going to evaluate this entire line as, as true and then print out these statements. So now with the AND and OR operators, as well as the combinations of IF statements that we've learned so far, you can come up with fairly complex decision-making instructions in code. In this week's newsletter, I shared the number one tool that you can use to clarify instantly any decision that you have to make, especially the top ones. If you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, just go to nelsonlim.com slash learn and you'll be able to subscribe to my newsletter. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this Python for Anxious Artists series. I'd love to listen to your feedback. I'd love to read your comments. So if there's anything that you enjoyed about it, if there's anything that can be improved, I'd love to hear about it. Please um, write in the comments below. Definitely hit the like button. This helps a lot. Uh, finally, We've got a couple more lessons left in terms of concepts to learn. Thereafter, we'll be building our own useful small little program. 
I've got a couple of ideas, but I'm going to turn it to the question of the day. What sort of program would you like to create with the skills that we have learned so far? Let me know in the comments below and just maybe your idea is going to be the one, the program that we will build in this series. See you next week.